I'm Gary. This is Austin. And we are Midwest Mics. Coming back at you with another show this week. Uh, first super wildcard weekend is in the books. Uh, feel actually pretty good about our predictions. Um, yeah. We had, you know, you went 6-0. and I went 5-1. and Obviously, the one being the Dallas-San Francisco game. Didn't go my way. We'll talk about that game more in a minute. But uh, overall, I, I mean, we were just talking about it. I thought it was a great weekend of football. What did you think kind of overall? Yeah, I thought it was funny. It's a it's a good weekend of football, even though, uh, f- what, four of the games were blowouts? Yeah. And so it's like, but it's still, it's still like, it's awesome. It's still cool to have uh, six games that many games and spread out. I enjoyed. I thought having it on one on Monday night was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed that. I hope they do that again. There's. I mean, there's talk now of eight teams, and then you still. What it would do is it would switch back to two buys again, and so you have like six that don't, and then you just have the two. And yeah. I'm, I'm down. For, hey, whatever. You uh, more. Yeah, you give me more games. I mean, okay, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, I mean the the only thing uh, that I would say about that is the two games that did involve the seven seed, neither were competitive. That's true. So now I'll say do, this: Do you, really do, do you actually do you actually care that they I, weren't competitive? I don't. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's football. Yeah, uh, like I mean, and and if you're you know if you do add an eight seed, then I guess that's your three and four playing your bottom seeds, right? Because one and two yeah. get the buy, so, so it may not be. I mean, so maybe it's a little more competitive because it's three eight and four seven. So maybe there's a little, maybe the gap's not as wide there. You could do that. I mean, I, I think that'd be fine. But I mean, I'm with you, man. If there's, I mean, I had all the games on at some point uh, throughout the weekend. And obviously, paying the closest attention, uh, you know, to to the Cowboys and Chiefs games. But yeah, I mean, I. At least watched some of all of them. Yeah, me too. Um, who were you the most impressed by? Honestly, I was the most impressed by Buffalo. Uh, you know, to do what they did to New England and Bill Belichick. I did pick Buffalo to win on the show last week, but I did bet on New England and the points. I actually teased it and got it up to like 10 and a half. 10, yeah. Uh, so I, I didn't think there was any way that, that New England would lose by double digits. And, I mean, they got completely destroyed. Most yards, points ever given up by a Bill Belichick defense in the playoffs. So Josh Allen was so good. He played almost a perfect game. That even it, I heard a thing today when he threw the touchdown to the offensive lineman, it actually brought his quarterback rating down. Yeah. Because they were on the one, and it lowered his yards per attempt. <laughs> oh, man. So, I mean, that's how good he was. Yeah. I mean, they were seven for seven touchdown drives. I yeah. mean, that's, like, insanely good. And I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's insanely good against a Bill Belichick defense, which is, you know, you would say Bill Belichick, best coach of all time. Yep. Certainly, if you don't think that, he's probably – you would think, hey, best coach now. And then if you hate him – and you're against him, I could even, I mean, I'll say, that worst case for somebody, he's got to be top five. Yeah, like definitely. Like, you know what I'm saying? This guy's good. And it, it also, I mean, it's just the, the rookie quarterback. I mean, it, it, that plays a factor, too, again. Rookie quarterbacks in playoffs, uh, not always uh, great. So, I kind of played into that. But, yeah, I agree with you. I was most impressed by Buffalo, which they come play KC next week, which I, I did not want to see. Um, I want to avoid Buffalo, but it'd be nice if, if Chiefs can get a revenge game. That is going to be I yeah, probably the best game of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, I, I was such a rematch from week five, um, but let's let's flip that around. What team did you think like underperformed the most this weekend or were most disappointing? Cardinals. The Cardinals. Yeah. I thought that game I, – I had no clue how to bet that game. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think I ended up just going with you Yeah, on Rams because you said, I'm going Rams. I think it, we got three and a half. 
Yeah, it was three and a half or four and a half, something like and that. And I was like, oh, it went lower than four. I was like, cool. All right, three and a half. Okay, I don't like the hook there. I don't like the, the three half, but I was like, all right, okay. J.J. Watt is coming back, and, you know, Arizona uh, or Arizona's pass rush, I thought they would – I thought they would do well uh, at the Stafford's record in the playoffs. Well, no. Yeah, Stafford record playoff trash. Yeah, he had never won a playoff game. Stafford's record against uh, over 500 teams is is not good. The problem is when you start taking into account on the Lions teams he was on, you know, then you're like, eh, okay, maybe yeah. that's skewed a little bit. But then at the same time, this year the Rams. Uh, a couple bad losses where you go, mm -hmm. oh, that's not great. So I remember I, I Tennessee thought, the the week after Tennessee lost Derrick Henry their first game. Like remember they went to LA and, and beat just them. dismantled the Rams. And that's why like, when people are like, oh, the Titans number one seed, I don't know. And then you go through some of their wins, you go, oh, that's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> um, on the flip side, Rams, I think the Rams solidified that the trade for Odell was the right move for them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's finally he's actually starting to show like, oh, this guy, this guy. On a he good, is pretty good. He's pretty good on a good team. It was, I don't want to say it's Baker Mayfield, but it was something going on in Cleveland where they couldn't get him involved. And uh, and uh, he goes here, and Sean McVay's like, cool. Uh, you fit right in where Robert Woods was. Yep. Think, about, think about it. They still have, I don't know. If they still have Robert Woods, I don't know if they would have traded for him. It, it, it would be a total Rams move to still go ahead and trade for him. Yeah. So I think he got hurt, and then they made the trade, right? I believe so, yes. Whatever. Uh, Cooper Cup continues to impress. He's awesome. And uh, Stafford, had, Stafford had a good game, I thought. Uh, but, yeah, I thought Arizona was the most disappointing to me. Yeah. Um, obviously, for me, it, it was the Cowboys. Yeah. Uh, you know, not taking care of business against San Francisco. I mean, they set a franchise record for penalties in a game. 12 or 14? Uh, th it was like 13 or 14, um, which you're not going to win in the NFL in the playoffs when you have that many penalties, number one. Number right. two, you also can't go down 13 nothing to start a playoff game and then expect to come back and win. Can't. Now, I mean, they, they had a chance. They had several chances, actually, in the second half. Um, you know, Jimmy G threw another terrible interception. Weren't two of them pretty – Yeah, that's right. Two of them were pretty bad. Bad. Um you know, and, and I know that's kind of what Dallas's defense had done all year was was get takeaways and get the offense extra possessions, and you know, I, it, but the the two picks that he threw there, like in the second half, were both of them. I was like, man, what is he? He he's he's getting us back in this game. Um, but you know, I had a buddy text me like at some point during the game. I don't remember. He's like, what's up with the Cowboys game? I just saw the score, and I said, well, they've done nothing to make me think they can come back and win. The hard and, thing about it is uh, get down 13-0 against a team that's really, really good at running the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, like really, really good at running the ball. You saw that. I think yeah, 161 yards running. I think something like that. And so it's like it's impressive. Uh, they run the – I mean, they run the ball really well. Their MVP of that team is their offensive line. Yep. <sighs> I mean, it, and Debo Samuel, you know, we, I knew he was going to be a problem coming in. I mean, that, that dude's good. Um, but, yeah, I just I, – I was really disappointed over, overall. I mean, the offense, the defense, and the Cowboys, just not very good um, all day. And, you know, I, the, you can say what you want about the, the final play and them running a quarterback draw and – not getting a snap off, and maybe, you know, if the referee hurries up a little more, they can get it off and get it. But, I mean, I've said it a thousand times, don't let it come down to that. Don't let it come down to that, yeah. Don't, don't, don't have it in the official's hands, right? Yeah, don't um, don't come down to the fact that, like, oh, God, I need to run, like, a two-minute drill, and I got to do it. Like, yeah, and, and I really feel like if they got a playoff, that they would have scored. Really? I mean, they, that drive was going very well. It was yeah, a I six agree. Six-point game. Um, they had got down the field, got out of bounds a couple times, but uh, again, don't don't let it come down to that. Uh, take care of your business. Um, so now it's another year of hurry up and wait to see if the Cowboys can get that sixth sixth Super Bowl ring. Um, you know, we'll we'll have to wait. I mean, there's going to be a lot of questions in the off season. Uh, 
you know, free agents. Uh, they're projected like 17 million over the cap. So, you know, that's you something that's got to be worked on, fixed. I think um, uh, even so, 17 million with the taking into account that the cap will probably go up. Yes. Oh, man. Okay. I know um, a lot of teams are in this. A lot of teams are in this. Yeah. Spot. A, a lot year. of teams are. So you move around stuff. Uh, Which don't, don't I would say try to figure out Zeke, his his money. Yeah. And, and then they came out uh, today or yesterday and said that Zeke's been playing with a torn PCL since week six or week four. I'm like, why, why are you having this guy play on a torn PCL? Like, you had a good, you had a good I mean, backup. I mean, the backup. Yeah, I mean, Tony Pollard, you know, put the ball in his hands more. Uh, I think he'd been fine. He, I, he did actually played pretty well. Yeah, he played uh, well. Running game wasn't great for the boys. No, on Sunday, so it's tough too, to win. Um, well, and when you get behind thirteen, it's tough to keep running the ball too. The time just keeps ticking away. Yeah, because you're, you know, um, you know, the, the other big questions, I guess, looming uh, for the Cowboys is. Both coordinators are getting head coaching interviews. Um, they've been requested, you know, by almost every team that has an opening. You know, Dan Quinn did turn down Jacksonville um, <laughs> for an interview uh, a couple weeks ago. But, you know, I, I think, to, to me, I don't know why anyone would want Kellen Moore to be their head coach. Uh, based on his game plan and how he called it on Sunday. That, you know, so I, I'm not... So you're uh, saying Jacksonville's going to hire him. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, but I, Going you know, the Jaguars. I, I'm honestly okay if Kellen Moore moves on. You know, Mike McCarthy's an offensive guy. So, you know, I, I think he could step into that role or hire another young guy there. Um you know, Kellen Moore is, I think, an up-and-coming and, and going to be a really good coach in the NFL for a long time. But I, I just, you know, based on watching the Cowboys play calling this whole year, I don't see him as a uh, head coach. Um, now, Dan Quinn, on the other hand, has been a head coach. I mean, he did get to the Super Bowl as a head coach, um, the famous 28-3 to game that they lost. Uh, so, you know, it, he'll get a lot of opportunities. If I was Jerry Jones, I'd open the checkbook and say, you know, hey, what's it going to take to keep you here? Give me a number. So you might do that or, or, or let him go and then kind of do the same thing you did. Go grab a good head coach that's a good defensive mind and bring him in, a Zimmer. Uh, I don't want Mike Zimmer. You don't want Mike Zimmer? No. His defense is pretty good in Minnesota. Brian Flores, maybe. I think he, oh Flores may get another head coaching job, but I, I think but I I, I don't again, know where my, um, my if, if in a dream world for me Dallas finds a way to keep Dan Quinn keep Dan Quinn and just keep everything the same. Yep, keep Kellen Moore in there. I'm not saying he needs to be fired. Um, you know I'm not a I'm not a fire the coach guy other than Jason Garrett, um, which he's still unemployed. Um. Which is where he needs to be. I thought he was coaching high school. I don't know. He might be. I was making a joke about that, maybe. Yeah, maybe he is. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's going to get one of those head coaching gigs in the uh, USFL that's coming back. Actually, it would make sense to me. I mean, they're giving Mike Riley and Todd Haley and, you know, Jason Garrett. He'd probably fit right I'll in. Watch all, I'm, I'm watching all that stuff, dude. I'm on, oh, the, yeah. I'm on the USFL. I gotta, we got to pick a team. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm waiting to see who all the head coaches are. Before, yeah, I, I'm not trying to choose Todd Haley's team. Yeah, no, I'm definitely not choosing Todd Haley. Watch how Spurrier comes in. Mike Riley. If Spurrier oh, comes in, I'm, if Spurrier comes in, whatever his team is, I'm yeah. check me in on Spurrier. Yeah. So, uh, we'll break. I mean, we don't even need to break down Chiefs. There's that much, um, yeah. tale of two halves, well, sort of, mm -hmm. right? Tale of almost first quarter and then the last, the next three, or a tale yeah. of one and three fourths quarters. And then the Chiefs go, okay, and they turn it on. Them getting that touchdown right before before halftime, huge. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Nobody says. Momentum is real. It's 100%. Oh, it's definitely real. Mitchell Schwartz uh, tried to come on and say it wasn't real. Oh, I don't think so. That's, that's a bad take. No, I don't think so. It's not real. He played, you know, he played pro, pro ball. He probably never felt it. He just was 
executing uh, at a high level, and he whatever, but it's a real thing, man. So the Chiefs got that. I thought it was awesome to see the Chiefs use Jarek McKinnon uh, to his highest ability, 100 and, 100 and some yard. I think 178 or 140 some, 50 some uh, all-purpose yards between his rushing, and he had a touchdown. And he had a receiving. Um, they did a really nice job. Kelsey showed up big way, really, really threw a good. touchdown. Threw a touchdown. We got a touch, we got a touchdown to the offensive lineman Allegretti um, on a nice little play. He basically throws he throws TJ to the ground and then like he's like blocking, throws TJ to the ground and then runs, it turns around, and catches it, and TJ's like, "What? He threw me down!" But at the same time, that was good, drawn up yeah. good shuffle pass to J- uh, Jerick McKinnon, which they use quite a bit, a little shuffle in the red zone. Uh, I thought the Chiefs did really well. I was really impressed by them. Um, really, the touchdowns I gave out to Pittsburgh were kind of garbage. Um, so, they, you know, they're playing a little soft and just not letting them s- score fast, which is cool. Um, I, I will say it was like – a lot of people was like, oh, were you ever worried? Yeah. When Pittsburgh got the defensive touchdown, I said, ooh, what's going on? Yeah. Because all, the big thing was, hey, if Pittsburgh's going to win this game, what do they got to do? They got to get a defensive touchdown. Uh, to to because their offense is not going to be able to score thirty, and it's just that they're not built that way, and uh, and so uh, oh, dang. and so anyways, like uh, they're just not they're not built that way. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I was super impressed. I really was a big fan. I thought Mahomes had a great game, four hundred yards, five touchdowns, and uh, moving on to Buffalo. Yeah. Um, before one one question, I do want to ask you: Chiefs game. There was there was some talk on Chiefs Twitter that I saw this week that uh, after the first quarter, Andy Reid took over the play calling duties from Eric Bieniemy. The Bieniemy started off the game, called the first quarter. How do we know that? I, I mean, that's just what they were, they were saying that there was kind of a change in what they felt like the Chiefs were trying to do. Did you feel like that watching the game? Like that they changed play callers after the first quarter? I did not. I, me that pers- might be true. I I don't. I didn't see that. Me personally, like, I I don't think Andy Reid is that guy that would panic like that. No, he's just, not a panic guy. Like, and, to me, and also he's that's also a panic move. He's right? also like he's he loves his coaches. Yeah, you think he would take like oh, I gave you no, I'm taking it back. Yeah, I don't think so. I think he might say the only thing he does from what I from like you kind of gather what happens because uh, when Nagy was here Nagy was calling plays in playoffs and then mm-hmm. what it is is he calls stuff and then Andy chimes in if he wants to say well it's something, something you know he does yeah. you know change something or do something or whatever because he's in on it but from what you see uh, the enemy's calling plays and why would you change yeah. in the playoff you're fourth you're number four in offense this year even with like the tough start at the beginning of the year and yep. so it's like I definitely feel like that would have been a panic move. I mean, I, you know, I, I didn't think that happened, but you know, there were people on on Twitter saying that Andy Reid like took that back, and I'm like, ah, that just doesn't seem like an Andy Reid move to me either. Love Twitter, but dang, they like it's overreaction. All oh yeah, the overreaction Monday is insane. Oh yeah, I mean, there was you know a ton of stuff about fire Mike McCarthy and this now. Like I, I don't think the guy deserves to get fired over that playoff game. One new division. Yeah. I mean, now, if that happens again next year, eh, it's a different story. It's all but. about, like, what uh, – I mean, I don't know. That's a t- It's a tough to, to move on because then you guys say also, okay, if we let McCarthy go. Yeah, who are you get? Who are we going with? We're going to go move up Quinn. We're going to kill him more. Yeah. You know, something like that. So, it's, it's it can be kind of tough on that. So, uh, and then as far as, like, Chiefs, I'm sure the is going to get some calls – for some interviews, maybe. Um, I it's weird. I'm like one well, of those things where I'm like, yeah, I don't want to lose him. Uh, at the same time, I'm like, man, I'd be kind of like feeling proud that this guy goes yeah. on and does something because, uh, you know, Nagy didn't. Nagy's time in Chicago started off pretty decent and then kind of ended kind of a bad way. Um, but Doug Peterson won a Super Bowl in Philly. Uh, they were pretty hot. I think a lot of times what happened with Peterson was uh, him and. Lowry and the GM, I don't think, uh, start seeing not seeing eye to eye on stuff, mm-hmm. and so they uh, they moved on pretty, you know, they moved on from him. But Doug Pierce is another guy I think he'll, he'll probably get some 
interviews and stuff and, yeah. and and whatever and he gets invited to some camps i think he was at he was at bear he was in a bears camp last year yeah. just helping out and stuff because him and nagy are from that reed tree and so uh that's kind of interesting i really hope the enemy gets something um I, I hope he doesn't go to denver but denver's a good spot to land in i it really it, i think it is yeah um but, but i hope he doesn't so yeah. uh let's break down let's talk about this weekend yeah, so um, you want to start with the Chiefs game or end with the Chiefs game? Yeah, let's go to Chiefs Buffalo. That's cool. Okay, yeah, so Chiefs Buffalo. Uh, obviously, you know we said it's a, it's a Week Five rematch. Um, Kelsey did not play though in, in that Week Five game. Also, uh, there was a couple other guys, right? Did not. Yeah, Frank Clark was uh, kind of banged up. Uh, no, no, Chris Jones. Yeah, and, I, I think that's right. And we had not traded for Ingram yet. Mm-hmm. So. You know, it's it's a different Chiefs team. Um, now, same you know, off, same offense, same offense. Uh, but I would say this: uh, I think we, I think the off, new offensive line was still kind of gelling together. Yeah, I mean, it was early, obviously, week five. Um, not a, you know, and Buffalo won that one. Now, obviously, it's a rematch of AFC Championship from last year, which the Chiefs won. So it could go either way. Uh, you know, I think Andy Reid will tweak some things from, from the game plan. Uh, him and Eric Bieniemy, the offensive game plan that they had week five. Yes. You know, because the the Buffalo team is not the same team that the Chiefs saw week five either. Yeah, and the Chiefs aren't the same team either. So it's interesting. Uh, I like referenced Mitchell Schwartz, but I think he, he offers a lot of kind of cool information. He, they, they asked him about uh, that, like – Hey, when you're when you're going game film and you're and you're planning, you're looking at things. Are you looking at what are you mostly looking at when you played them last, or are you looking at like the sample of their last few games? Are you looking at all their games? What? And he said a lot of times you look at their last. You still look at how you played them, but you'll take big time tape off the last month or so because mm-hmm. all those rookies that they have have put on have got new moves and they, recently. And they've done new things, and you kind of want to see what wrinkles they've added throughout the season. So what they've been doing the last month, and that most likely is what the real picture you're going to get from those guys. Not what they were doing week one or week two or week three, not even yeah. week five. It's the last month to where they're gearing up for playoff ball, and then you go, and then you start looking at that and go, okay, okay, let's see what they're doing. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah, my um, prediction is I, I got Chiefs are was it two? It's two and a half right now. Yeah, two minus and two and a half. Right half. I, I bet I bet on it. I'm not going to say the Bills um, are going to win. Um, I think it's going to be a really good game, though. Yeah, I think it'll be a really good game. Uh, I will also be betting on the Chiefs to cover the two or two and a half. I was kind of waiting to see if it was going to drop maybe under two. I know. Uh, you know, n- not that I don't think they won't cover the two, but just, you know, obviously it's a little better odds for me. Yeah, uh, I, and I think, I think there's no shot. I think there's no shot it goes up to three. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't either. Um, I think it's going to stay under three, and so at some point I will bet it uh, between now and, and game time Sunday night. But, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the Chiefs winning and uh, going to the AFC Championship. You know whether that will be in Tennessee or Kansas City. It'll be really good. All right, let's talk about. What's the, you want to talk about in the AFC or NFC? Yeah, so we'll just go. Uh, we'll just go with the Titans game. Titans Bengals, three and um, a half. Titans favored three and a half. Uh, I or will, is it four and a half? Uh, three and a half is what I saw. Three and a half. Um, I will also be betting on the Titans to cover. Um, I think that what the Bengals have done is they have um, overachieved this year. They have achieved more than anybody thought they would going into the year. Yeah. Um, not that they're satisfied with that, but I, I just think it's kind of time for that story to come to an end. You know, Tennessee obviously has been one of the top two or three teams in the league all year. All year, even without Derrick Henry. Yeah, even without Derrick Henry. It's it's very possible that Henry will be back on Sunday. So, um, you know, I'm definitely going with Tennessee to cover and win at home. So that would mean that Kansas City would have to travel to Tennessee next weekend for the AFC Championship. I'm not excited about that. So part of me is rooting for Cincinnati to get him mm-hmm. an arrowhead, right? So I'm going to root. I'm gonna, it's weird, though, but I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to bet Tennessee. Um, I took him already money line in, in a parlay I showed you earlier. 
Um, I think Tennessee's going to beat them. Mostly, I think, kind of some of the stuff you said. So Derrick Henry coming back is huge. They're a great football team. They're a good football team anyways, but they're great with Derrick Henry because you got to account for him. Uh, they run the play action really well. Uh, their guys are healthy. A.J. Brown's healthy. Julio Jones healthy. Um, so it's just, it's one of those things where you go, offensive line's healthy. The Tennessee's looking pretty good. Plus, it's got a weak rest. And everybody knows, and you can go back through all the data, the number one uh, the, to get home field and go is their best bet to go to the yeah. Super Bowl to get a bye. So one and two. In previous years, it's the one and two seed. Have huge advantages with the bye. And then home field's even more for the for the one. So I'll take Tennessee. Um, one of those games, though, too, is the same kind of thing. Say since if like Cincinnati beat them, I wouldn't be like, oh. Like, I wouldn't be like, whoa. Like, it wouldn't just blow me away. It would blow me away if it was a blowout. Uh, if Cincinnati wins, I think it's close. If T- Tennessee could win a close game or they could mop them. Yeah. Either way. So, uh, that's where I'm going at with Tennessee. All right. Um, over in the a- uh, NFC, uh, Tampa Bay um, playing the Rams. Or no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. San Francisco goes to Green Bay. Yes. So, yes, Tampa Bay playing the Rams. Minus. Ooh. What Tampa was Bay was three, right? Three. Yeah, three. Um, I think that Tampa Bay is going to win the game. Can't pick against Tom Brady. Um, so, I think that, uh, you I'm know. I'm sorry. The, the Rams, Iowa just lost to uh, I'm sorry. Rutgers. I'm sorry. 48-46. I'm sorry, baby. Uh, uh, but, uh. But, yeah, I'm, go- I'm going Tampa Bay here uh, to beat the Rams. I-, I think it'll be a close game. You know, I, I like the Rams a lot. But uh, I just – I don't think they can get it done in Tampa. I'm just going to stick with my – well, I have – I don't know. I have I have a, a money line parlay where I have Buccaneers. But a three line – if I can get three and a half, I might go Rams on that. I like betting Rams money line. Um but as far as winning the game, I'm going to go with Tampa Bay. And for a lot of the same reasons that we talked about where it was like we weren't sure if I should bet him against Arizona. Going against a winning a team with a winning record. Um, Matt Stafford is kind of predictable. Um, you know, I'll take, you know, as far as the coaching matchup goes, I'll take McVay actually over Bruce Arians. I think Arians uh, benefits quite a bit from Mr. Thomas Brady. And I think he has a really good OC with uh, Byron Left, which I think does a really nice job too. But it's a, it, I'll take Sean, uh, Sean McVay over him. I'm saying that I'm going to still take Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, because of Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I'll take Tom Brady over. You're, basically what you're saying is, hey, I'm taking Tom Brady over Matt Stafford. Now another one of those games. I think every game. I think every, almost every game for me. You know, I think you feel differently about Green Bay, San Fran. Is hey, if it goes the other way, I'm like, yeah, okay. You know, I had the Rams in the Super Bowl beginning of the year, so if the Rams somehow pull it out like a close game or something like that. Um, then I'm like, okay, you know, that makes a little, that makes sense. Uh, but I'll go with I'll, I'll go with Tampa Bay. High scoring or low scoring. That's yeah. see over under the over under. I don't know what the over under is, but I, I can't either. I can't figure it out because Tampa Bay's defense is so. Sometimes I feel like they're sus- suspect only because they're hurt, mm-hmm. and the Rams do have amazing pass. I mean, rush. I wouldn't be surprised if it was like if there was a combined forty eight points or so, forty eight fifty fifty two somewhere in that range. Okay, I don't, um, I don't know what the over under is, man. I'm not trying either. to figure that out, but like. Uh, oh, I did see a stat. What do you think? What do you think uh, league average was this year over under points wise? Mm, Mid forties. Well, so a little forty eight. Forty eight. Forty eight okay. is the average. Yeah. So when you see any games on over under that are under forty eight, you look at the teams, or if it goes way down to like forty four, little tip on betting. If it's a huge, if it's a huge under where it's like lower than forty eight. You're going down to 42, 43, and there's a dog that is like a plus six, seven dog. A lot of times you want to go with that dog because they're because they're thinking, oh, low, low points. So how the heck is that other team going to score a million points and be in by a ton? 
So you check, you know, you check your dogs on that, and you go, okay, six or seven. All they gotta do is get, you know, a couple of touchdowns, and we're thinking there's not gonna be a lot of points or whatever. So, a little betting tip for you. There, there you go, um, dropping knowledge. And try um, the game that I think is gonna be a blowout. Um, I don't is Green Bay over San Francisco. I think that Aaron Rodgers, he's never beat San Francisco in the playoffs. He is there. Five, you go. He's five hundred against the 49ers all time, like six and six. Okay. Looked up some stats today. That's it. Um, so I think he's gonna come out. He's got had a week off. And they played this year, dude. He's gonna come out and they just played this wreck year shot. already, and it was close. I think he's gonna come out and wreck shot. He might wreck shop. I'm just saying. I, yeah. I got San Fran winning this game. See, I do not. I, I money. I got a money line bet on him already, plus two hundred. I like those. See, so here's the deal. When it said, I was like, well, maybe, and it was plus two hundred. I was like, yeah, I'll take that. Double money, sure. I like San Fran a lot. I like Kyle Shanahan a lot. The problem is, are they are they healthy? Uh, we had uh, uh, Bosa Jimmy? go out with the uh, concussion. Concussion. I think he'll be fine. The other one, this guy's name is like Warren, Warren or something like yeah. that. Got hurt. Jimmy G has a bum shoulder, throwing shoulder. Is it that much of a downgrade to go to Trey Lance though? I don't know. But Jimmy G is Jimmy G is a weird quarterback. Yeah. Because he wins games. He wins. But he does knucklehead interceptions. Yeah. Where you go? What are you doing? But at the same time, do you really want to go with a rookie in the playoffs? So they'll figure out a way for Jimmy G to play. Maybe run some packages with Lance down in the red zone. They did it like a couple times, but they really have not included him except for his start that he had where he played pretty decent and won. But their emphasis is their running game. Packers running defense is not great. So I think that's where he can take advantage of trying to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field and play a slow game where time's always ticking. And San Fran's going to try to control. Uh, San Fran obviously try to control the time clock. And the ball, have ball control, similar to what they tr- did against Dallas. Um, yep. And so I think that's their game plan. They probably go with it. Uh, as far as as far as coaches go, I think pretty pretty even. I think both guys, Lafleur and Shanahan, are two young, bright head coaches and good. Lafleur is going to be interesting to see eventually how he does without Aaron Rodgers. That'll be really interesting to see how that goes down. Um, I've seen Kyle Shanahan win games with rando quarterbacks. Where you go, who's that? I mean, he took Matt Ryan to a Super Bowl. You got Matt. I uh, Matty Ice was the MVP that year, dude. Like man, Matty Ice, Matty Ice Hall. Uh, I don't want to say Hall of Famer. I don't know. The numbers do add up, but that's tough. Um, but he's won games with quarterbacks. Where you go, who? Nick Mullins. Yeah. Let's go. So I think as a co- you know coaching thing, I think I still think it's pretty even. Um, but I'm gonna go San Fran. So yeah, I'm going all the home teams. You've got three or four home teams um, this weekend. Yeah. So uh, you know we're starting to also get into college basketball a little bit. Uh, not gonna talk much about that this week, but uh, weeks going forward, we'll start to integrate more and more college basketball talk. Um, you know, as the NFL kind of winds down, college football's done. So. You know, we'll we'll be talking more Big Twelve. Um, I will go ahead and give out uh, one pick. I do have uh, I have a bet for okay. a futures bet for Kentucky to win the national championship. Solely based on two things. Me, I'm tail. I was tailing a guy that I, I saw make that bet on Action Network, and then also at the same time, it, it's like if the young dudes on that team somehow put it together and figure it out and play up to. You know, they're NBA guys. Mm-hmm. If they play up to that, then they'll, then they'll they'll win. The problem is freshmen, sophomores, really, really young, and they're inexperienced. Even though they're highly talented, their inexperience comes and bites them. So, you know, that's where that's at. But, yeah, I actually, besides that, and literally I tailed a guy, and I know that about Kentucky, I don't know nothing about college basketball this year. Yeah, I, I – uh... Missed on Kansas last night. I had them covering three Barely, and a half. dude. Barely, they, dude. They only won by three. Um, I took Duke to cover. They got beaten overtime. Yeah. And then uh, I hit on um, Oklahoma State. 
Yes. No, 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 no. It was oh, Baylor. No. Baylor. Baylor. West you hit on. You hit on Baylor. I you Baylor, hit on Baylor like, like really good. Yeah. Well, that West was like not, not not even like a game. Yeah. So um, you did a good job on that. But yeah, but I so not good. Um, but like I said, we'll we'll be watching more games and studying more. So talk about that more next week. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. Um, you got anything else you want to talk about? No, I think that about covers it. Here's your interesting factoid. I just thought about it. Okay. Highest highest paid athletes under twenty five. Did you see Jake Paul's on that list? Yes, I did. Forty five million? Yeah. Huge. <laughs> hey, let me tell you something. His fights are actually, to me, more entertaining than the regular boxing fights. Yeah. And that is a knock to boxing more than it is. Yeah, because he's a, he's an hey, entertainer. Props to Jake Paul, but that is a knock to boxing where they need to get some personalities up in that game. And okay, literally, like they say, uh, Wilder and Fury three was awesome. I saw highlights, and yeah, I'm sure I think it was. But besides that, you tell me a high profile boxing match besides the Jake Paul fights. Mm-hmm. Those guys can't put it together. No, they got to get a promoter like a like a Dana like a Dana White for UFC. They need to get something like that for boxing. And not somebody that's shysty like a Don King, like a like legit stuff. Yeah, because there's a lot of money to be made. I mean, Jake Jake Paul fights aren't even that great of fights, and they generate insane Lots revenue. So that's my little take on that. And I thought it was interesting that Paul made that list. And it's also interesting. It's like, oh, I wonder if like, you know, if the, if you can apply this to some other stuff. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the personality and stuff they sell the fights. Um, we know that. So. Um, Anything else? I don't, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, that's it. So Pretty much football dom- football dominates right now. And then once we get past the football, then we'll start going to the college basketball. Yep. So, all right, I'm Gary. This is Austin. And this has been Midwest Mike's. We'll see you next week.